Hi, my name is Beth, and I'm a librarian. Let's talk about fake news. The truth is, fake news is nothing new. In 1898, newspaper owner William Randolph Hearst said, You furnish the pictures, and I'll furnish the war. Imagine this. The year is 1897, and the USS Maine has just exploded in Havana Harbor. While the cause is still disputed to this day, Hearst saw an opportunity. In search of sales, he proclaimed in his newspapers that the explosion was due to Spanish sabotage. Within three months, the U.S. was at war with Spain in the Spanish-American War. While many factors led up to the war, Hearst's newspaper's effect on shaping public support for the war was significant. Hearst's actions signified the growing influence of mass media, which had never had such an immediate and far-reaching impact. This was the start of something called yellow journalism, but today we might call it clickbait. Hearst published his article because he had an agenda. He wanted to make people angry, and he wanted them to act. His actions influenced the public opinion, much in the way you see today with celebrities, politicians, and other influential people. This is why it's important to think about why someone would publish something. Fake news hasn't gone away since Hearst first published his article. It's only getting bigger. What does someone gain from publishing a false article today? Maybe they want to make the public angry or create controversy about political issues. Maybe it's just as simple as they want to make money from people clicking on their articles. Solving the problem of fake news isn't easy, and it takes hard work on your part. There are lots of tools that librarians use to combat fake news. Snopes.com is an excellent one. With Snopes, you can fact-check any claim if you think it sounds suspicious. The old saying goes, if it sounds too good or too bad to be true, it probably is. Another great tool is NewsGuard. NewsGuard is a Chrome extension that you can install on your laptop that's made by journalists. NewsGuard is also great because they're very transparent about who is doing the rankings. Each website you see on a Google search, like you can see here, either gets a green check for being a good source, a red check for being a bad source, or a gray check that means it may or may not be a good source. Hovering over the result, like I'm doing here, will show you why the journalists have ranked this website as being trustworthy or not. This is a great way to guard yourself against fake news. When looking at an article, news story, or headline, you need to ask yourself, what is the evidence? Have the writers used reliable sources to support their argument? News articles are factual and answer the question of who, what, when, where, why, and how. But some opinions get mixed in like letters to an editor or a movie review, so it's not easy to tell if something is based on a veritable fact or someone's particular view. The easiest way to tell the difference between fact and opinion is to ask if the statement can be proven. For example, Seattle is in Washington state is a fact. There are maps that can prove this to be true. However, Seattle is the best place in Washington state is an opinion. Many people who live in Olympia, Walla Walla, and Yakima might disagree with you. Opinion is a personal view, attitude, bias, or appraisal. Another huge contribution to the fake news problem is your Facebook news feed. In 2016, the Wall Street Journal published something called Red Feed, Blue Feed. This tool shows what someone's news feed looks like for someone who is politically left-leaning and politically right-leaning on the same issue. Take healthcare, for example. You can see here that there are two very different ways healthcare is discussed, depending on which way you might politically lean. Why is this true? It's something called confirmation bias. You, naturally, want to believe something if it's true if you already have evidence that proves it. You are more inclined to listen to something that is telling you your opinion is correct instead of something that challenges it. This is true for everyone. For example, I might believe that the New York Yankees are the best team in baseball. This means I am naturally more inclined to listen to media sources, pages, and people that have the same opinion as I do. You might think the Seattle Mariners are the best team. You're more inclined to listen to your friends and other media sources who also believe this and probably won't be inclined to listen to me disagreeing with you. It's like this with political issues, too. Your newsfeed will reflect which voices you're already listening to. Facebook wants you to spend time on their website, so they show you things they know you already agree with. That's how they make money. It's also important to note this isn't an issue that's exclusive to Facebook. Google has been accused of using filter bubbles, showing you news articles and results from searches that are in line with what you already believe. Google will often manipulate their results to show you things based on what it thinks your location is, how old you are, and what political opinions you hold. We recommend using an alternative search engine, such as DuckDuckGo, instead of Google. Thanks for watching!